In this video, I will give a rough sketch of proof of the fundamental theorem of statistical learning. We call the theorem. It asserts that a hypothesis class H is agnostic, pack learnable, if and only if its VC dimension is finite. If you have no idea of what this means, I highly recommend the previous video I made about this theorem, which also refers to videos that give the definitions of pack learnability and the VC dimension. I am now going to provide a very rough sketch of the proof, which I think can be interesting as many proof techniques that appear here often come out in papers on theoretical machine learning as well. In a previous video, we've almost proved that hypothesis classes with infinite VC dimensions are not pack learnable. Roughly, the argument involves a no fringe theorem that asserts that no matter what learning algorithm you use, there will always be some underlying function that will differ for roughly half of the unobserved and unconstrained features. Unfortunately, if the VC dimension is huge, such unobserved and unconstrained features are a non-vanishing fraction of all features, no matter how large the sample set is. This proves the left-to-right implication. I'll let you ponder the details of how to adapt the arguments we used for unstructured infinite hypothesis classes to infinite VC dimensions. Now, the right to left implication is much harder. The proof relies on two lemmas. The first one is the lemma by Power, Shela, and Pearls. It asserts that if the VC dimension is finite, then the number of restrictions of hypothesis of H to subsets of size M, which we shall call tau of M, grows polynomially with M. This is really a remarkable, lovely lemma. Indeed, if the VC dimension was infinite, then we'd expect the growth to be 2 to the power m in the worst case, as there would always be subsets of size m that are shattered by h. However, when the VC dimension is finite, when subsets c are much larger than the VC dimension, the number of ways our hypothesis behave on c suddenly drops to being polynomial on the size of c. Intuitively, this is a consequence of the fact that no subset of size d plus 1 of c is shattered. This imposes great restrictions on what the restrictions of hypothesis to c can be. In fact, it can be proved that the number of restrictions of a hypothesis H of H to C is no more than the number of subsets of C of size D. This can be proved by induction on the size of C. However, the number of such subsets is the sum of subsets of sizes I, for I between 0 and D, which is the sum of I choose M. And for m larger than d plus 1, this expression here can be upper bounded by e times m divided by d to the power of d, where e here is Euler's constant 2.7 and something. And all of that as a function of m is, as we can see, a big O of m to the power d. Now the second lemma we need is a proof of uniform convergence. More specifically, with high probability over sample sets of size m, the frequency of mispredictions of any hypothesis h on the sample set is not much different from the probability of mispredictions of h according to the probability distribution d. And in fact, with high probability, this deviation caused by the sample set can be nicely upper bounded by the square root of the logarithm of the number of restrictions of the hypothesis two subsets of size 2m, that's tau of 2m, divided by the square root of m, along with some other terms that are less important. The sketch of the proof of this lemma goes as follows. The probability of misprediction is equal to the expected frequency of mispredictions on a sample set S prime of size m. Using a generalization of the triangle inequality, we can upper bound the expectation of the difference between the sample set and the distribution d, as measured by the probability of mispredictions, by the absolute value of the expectation of the sum of minus 1, 0, or plus 1 independent random variables whose expected values are equal to 0. This resembles the hypothesis of the central limit theorem, and intuitively, this will lead to high concentration around the expected value, which in this case is 
zero. However, the central limit theorem only applies to the infinite limit case, so it cannot be applied to our setting. However, there are finite case variants of it that yields nice upper bounds on the probability of large deviations from the means, like the Hoefding inequality. For any choice of a hypothesis H, the Hoefding inequality applies. Now, that's very nice, but it only applies to one specific hypothesis H, and what we would want is a bound that works for all hypotheses. Namely, we want to make sure that it cannot be the case, or it's highly unlikely that there exists a hypothesis H for which the sample set behaves very differently from the actual probability distribution D. And this corresponds to taking a huge union bound. Now, if we did it without thinking much, like we would get something very, very bad because we have, would have to multiply the right-hand side by the cardinal of H, which could potentially be infinite. However, here's the big major trick of this proof, and it's a very common trick in machine learning theory. The big trick is that there are many hypotheses H that corresponds to the actual same event that we want to bound. So, in fact, the union bound that we are thinking of can be reduced to the number of different effects of the choice of hypothesis H to the values here, theta HI. The number of such combinations is actually upper bounded by the number of restrictions to the set of features that we're considering in this bound, namely S union S prime. Now S union S prime has at most two M elements, so the number of restrictions of hypothesis H of H to the set S union S prime is no more than tau of 2M. And now we can take uh, the union bound with a right-hand side, which is not going to be too large, it's going to be tau of 2m multiplied by the Hoefding term. So with only a small probability, will we have a large deviation between the sample set S and the actual probability distribution D, as measured by a hypothesis H of H. From here, we can use another trick that consists in adding up carefully the events of large deviation to upper bound the absolute value of the expected difference of the number of errors. Crucially, we take steps that are proportional to the standard deviation, and this upper bounds the expectation of the deviation, delta, between the sample set S and the probability distribution D, as measured in the worst case of a choice of H in H. To conclude, we need to convert this upper bound on the expectation into a high probability event. You can do this using the Markov inequality. Finally, we can conclude by combining the two lemmas. It's mostly only algebra at this point, although a bit of care is required to convert the statement about the uniform convergence into a statement about pack learnability. Once again, I am skipping a lot of details. But eventually, we see that we have roughly the condition that epsilon must be smaller than 1 over delta times the square root of d divided by m. Isolating m yields m must be larger than d divided by epsilon delta squared. This is a polynomial in 1 over epsilon and 1 over delta q a d, roughly. Evidently, I have been very, very approximate here with the explanations and much more details are required, but they are beyond the scope of this video. Besides, I should add that a much better bound, especially with respect to delta, can be achieved as the optimal sample complexity is of the order d plus log of 1 over delta divided by epsilon squared. However, the proof of this tighter bound is much, much more difficult to derive than the upper bound we derived. Nevertheless, it should be noted that in this formula, you can see that the effect of delta is pretty negligible. The critical values to focus on are rather the VC dimension D and the approximate correctness epsilon of the learned prediction function. For more details on the fundamental theorem of statistical learning, I highly encourage you to check out the book Understanding Machine Learning from Theory to Algorithms by Shai Shalev Schwartz and Shai Ben David.